Welcome folks to the fascinating world of ranching and the art of turning yearlings into profit. Stick with us because in the next few minutes, we're gonna uncover the secrets, strategies, and some of the hardest work in the world that goes into raising the cattle that end up on your plate. Whether you're a seasoned rancher or just someone who doesn't even know what a yearling is, this video is a journey you don't want to miss. So what, what are we doing today, Steve? We're, these are yearlings, right? Yeah, these are, yeah. There's several ways that ranchers make money. And the first one is actually raising commercial cattle. That involves calving out a calf, raising it to the age of six or eight months, weaning it, meaning taking it off of its mother and selling it on the market. That's where the yearling market starts. To see my other video about how ranchers make money raising pears, you can click up here or go to the link in the description. So when you're running yearlings, what you're actually doing is taking a weanling calf and raising him to the next stage, the stage where he goes to finishing at a feedlot to get ready for your plate. This means either taking calves that you have raised and weaning them and putting them out in pasture as yearlings, or purchasing weaned calves from somebody else to run as yearlings or grass calves. If you purchase the calves outright, you have an immediate cash outflow. Oh, oh man, that's too bad. If you raise them yourself and wean them and then run them as yearlings, you don't have that cash outflow, but you don't get a check because you're not selling them. So you have to hold that over. All your expenses of raising that calf, you have to hold over for a whole nother year before you get what paid. Long oh, finally yeah. got paid. Glad he finally got something. Today I'm over in eastern Montana helping some guys that I just met. How you doing, Kirk? Good to meet you. Round up yearlings and ship them. Just so you know how ranchers make money by selling yearlings, we're going to put together an example. So let's say you bought 100 head of weanlings for $2 a pound at 600 pounds each. That's $120,000 out of pocket. Well, running yearlings is completely different than running, you know, just raising calves and selling them. It, because they're yearlings, it's like a bunch of teenagers, so you got to be very slow. You don't want to, you don't want to rip and yeehaw and yell because they'll just take off at a dead run and and go wherever they feel like it. Come on, get going. <laughs> They really are teenagers. The difficulties in raising yearlings are very different than the difficulties in raising pears. And that's what I'm going to show you during this little ride. He's going. Hey, hey. Oh, you're going to come back, huh? <laughs> Picking the worst spot you can. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> he came down. There's one more way up there on top. So there's the one, one yearling up there. Are these all steers or are they some heifers? I think they're all steers. I haven't seen everything I've seen. Yeah. They have, they have some heifers, but uh, they won't run together. Oh, okay. And we'll see which way this sucker goes. Hopefully, this is the wrong way, so we need to go back down that way. There's another one right over there. Ready up over here and see what I can do. If you want to just yeah, I'll here. I'll kind of hang here. Now, do we yeah, want to make him go that way? Down that way or yeah. down this ridge? Either, either or. Either or, okay. Yeah, don't let him go back along the ridge Got it. Since those cows went a different direction, I gotta head back okay. down to meet up with them All at right. the bottom. There they are. <laughs> they came right down the right down the draw. 
black one and a red one. So here comes the bulk of the cows <clears throat> down down this draw. Pretty calm. Some days, I mean, the wind's not blowing. Uh, I mean, that doesn't mean they're going to be calm in the krell, but they seem pretty pretty laid back. I mean, even the ones we've pushed off the hills haven't really run off and done something completely stupid like some of them do when they're yearlings. I shouldn't say that until we get them in the wing, but... <laughs> oh, you're going to come right around? Yep, yep. Yep, 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 Hey, 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 dirty bugger. Oh man, we're gonna lose them all. I personally thought this would be a fantastic time to cut away and tell you about marbled meats. In the US, it's really hard to tell where your beef is actually coming from when you buy it in the store because we're not forced to put a label of origin on the meat. To make sure you're buying beef directly from someone who raises it, butchers it, and sells it to you in Billings, Montana without leaving the state, you can go to marble.com and make sure you use the code TRINITY to get 10% off of your order. Now back to the action. This is literally like herding chickens. They do not want to go there. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Uh oh. Uh oh. Of course. Yep, yep, yep. Goodness. <laughs> Welcome to Yearlands. Welcome to what? Yearlands. Yeah, yearlings. They all get in the, where that's you think the you got time. them all. That's the first time in maybe 10 years that we've spilled them. Oh, really? One of the reasons that yearlings are wild like this, and you have some of these spillings or what, you know, just something that goes wrong and they run all over the place, is because they're not pairs anymore. When you look at a, a group of cows that's pairs, you'll see that they're lining out or they're moving because the babies are with their mom. Their mom is a calming force and she's showing them where to go. These ones now have to do everything on their own. So they're not sure. They're not sure of where they're going. They get scared. They're not sure how to move away from the horse because they're away from their mother. That makes a huge difference. Easy boys. Whoa now, whoa now. Settle down, settle down, boy. Easy now. Easy now. So what they're gonna do now is on the other end over there, they're gonna be weighing them. So they weigh a bunch of them and then they'll put them on the truck and that way they know what weight they are when they put them on and uh, what weight they are when they take them off and what weight they are selling at because typically they'll be selling them right here this is like a transaction deal so you're putting them on the truck and you're getting paid for the weight that you're putting on the truck minus 
3% shrinkage or whatever because they figure they're going to shrink on the truck. As a rancher, it is extremely stressful for you because this is when you're going to get paid. You're going to get your check today. So you don't want anything to go wrong so you can get paid for the work that you've done for the last year or two. The next step to this is driving these yearlings up through the chutes and into the scale. So all these cows have the same brand on them then? Or? Yeah, that's what I'm checking for. They should have the X hanging H on the hip, right hip, right, right hip. hips. Just checking them as they come off. What they're doing here is they're weighing them. So they take, they take the number, they count them when they come off. So they know how many was on the scale. And then they can divide that by the number and get the, the weight of, average weight of a whole bunch of animals here. So what's the average weight so far? 888. If you could explain what a brand inspector does, what's the purpose of a brand inspector? Well, just make sure there's proper ownership of all these cattle. The, the neighbor's cattle didn't accidentally get in here and, you know, get shipped. Um, just making sure there's documentation on the transportation and, and change of ownership of the cattle. Okay. And then, and then you also have to have an, an inspection on them to cross the county line, right? Or the, yeah. Any county line, and then if these cattle were going out of state, they would have to have health papers on them as well. A blood test? Well... Or just like a health check? These are market animals, so probably probably just a clearance from the vet. Gotcha. So by market animals, he means these are going directly to a feedlot, which then will sell them to a packer plant, which will butcher them and put them in the store. So that's market cow. They're not, if they were like heifers that were gonna be used for breeding, then that would be a little different. Well, how many cattle are out here in this, in Weibo County or whatever county you're in? Well, there's more cattle than Weibo, uh, or more cattle than people. By quite a bit, <laughs> isn't there? I mean, it's, yeah. These two boys are just helping out today. And you both live in Weibo, right? Yes, correct. And you manage a ranch for somebody? Yep. Yes. Good help is hard to find sometimes. Yes. Yeah, Especially free help. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. 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 these guys don't get paid for this, so I assume. Right, right. <laughs> Most of the time they don't. It's one of the things about ranchers, they're always trying to find a way to... you got to have help, but they don't... Yeah. yeah. Good so food. Good people, food brings us in. Yeah. people help, help each other out. Yeah, and trade, so... Yeah, they yeah, come help you and... Help me, so that... That we works out. We don't keep track of days too much, you know, unless it gets really, it, you, then, we, then we'll tell each <laughs> other. Hey, really hey, hey, lopsided? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. <laughs> right. I've been here three times. I've been here a lot three. of times, yeah. <laughs> it always seems like the wives doing help, the help, the numbers. Help, we we help, trust them a lot. That's help, why that. Are you calling it kind of risky? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm calling it risky if we did it. So what are you guys doing? Oh, we just keep a total the number of head and average or the weight. load, the load and how many there is. Yep. Once in a while, well, she's keeping an average, and I try to keep a total a total average as we go. So okay. the guys have an idea where we're at. Gotcha. And then you compare yeah, every once in a while just to make yeah, sure you got them right. Make sure we don't skip. Gotcha. Skip a number. Got to weigh them all. And then they'll sort them and we'll come back and weigh whatever they don't want, the weigh backs. You'll sort whatever they yeah, tell you to sort, sort off. Whatever he wants to take and then. Gotcha. Yeah. How many do you want to take? All of them. You want to take all of them? No, there's some cattle that uh, have blemishes that'll get sorted off. I see. So the, you got the scale guy who owns the scale and the buyer and a brand inspector and then two two different gals writing down all the numbers of weights and everything that's always a good idea because it's not one person writing everything down they got checks all over the place how many can they fit on these trucks yeah four trucks uh yeah they're sure they're probably going to be 10 or 11 come they can fit about 65 to 70 depending on the, the truck okay so like this one over here is a double 
There's just the double axle and then there's a spread axle. Those are, oh, can't haul as much as like the triple seven. axles or the, <laughs> the four, the quads in the back. Gotcha. So, gotcha. They've weighed all the ones that are here. So they'll start loading trucks and then they got like 60 head out there still that we lost. So they're coming back over the hill. And when they get those in, they'll only have to weigh those, but that'll only take a little while. Cause there's like six loads. What do you think? What do you think, buddy? Hmm? What do you think there, buddy? Mm-hmm. All right, well, let's go over the numbers. We got 100 yearlings that we bought for $120,000. Applying a sliding scale to what today's prices are, we're going to use 191 as the sell price per pound. Since we bought them for $2 a pound, we're going to sell them for 191 a pound. Now, the reason that is is because you're growing them, so you're adding weight. So the more weight you add, the less per pound you can sell it for. All right, they're going to figure 3% shrinkage. Now, what that means is when you get the cows on the truck, they're going to lose a little weight because of the water and stuff and nervousness and stress and everything. So they figure a 3% shrinkage by the time they get to the feedlot. So we take 3% off, that's 860 pounds each, times 191 is $1,642 per cow. Now, if we take off what we paid, which is $1,200 a cow, that's $442 worth of profit. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Profit, yeah. baby. Yeah. Profit, baby. But then we have some expenses. Oh, ah. expenses oh, no. suck. So you have general expenses as in wages, fences, all that kind of stuff, and it's really hard to figure. But as far as this example, we're going to just figure some of the concrete stuff. So you got a few vaccines in there. You got about $40 per cow. And if you own your own land, you're going to pocket more money, even though you have property taxes and all the stuff that comes goes with that, you're going to actually have more profit. But let's say you had to lease the ground. So leasing the ground is going to cost you about $30 a head per month times 10 months. That's $300 a head. So that leaves you with about $100 per head of profit. If you times that by 100, 100 head, you're at about $10,000 profit. Now this is going to be pretty close to what you can do. Here's the kicker. If the price is low when you buy them and high when you sell them, you're going to make way more money. But if the price is high when you buy them and you don't know that and it drops so you have to sell them for a lower price percentage wise you're going to end up losing money so this is why this all all ranching is a gamble but this is why you could make more you could make less it just depends on all the factors how much hay you have to put in them how much grass you have how much you own how much you have to rent all of those things are factors in this so when you look at this in total you have the potential to make about somewhere between $5,000 and $20,000 on this 100 head of yearlings. And this is how running yearlings works. So now that you've got to see some of the numbers and actually ride along on a little adventure out in eastern Montana running yearlings, you can kind of see some of the aspects of running yearlings and how it fits into the bigger picture of raising beef. One of the things we didn't talk about in this video was how many acres you need to run a hundred yearlings. That varies so greatly, we really can't give you a definitive answer. It depends on what part of the country you're in, what kind of ground it is, whether it's irrigated, non-irrigated, how much winter there is that year. All that stuff makes a big difference. In Montana, where I was, it can take somewhere between 15 and 25 acres per cow to run those yearlings. So you can figure that out somewhere around 25, 2,600 acres to run your 100 yearlings on. Very few ranchers actually run beef all the way from calf to your table, farm to table, as it were. Very little beef that's raised in Montana actually gets sold in Montana, for example. If you wanna find a place you can buy beef directly from Montana, make sure you go to lifeinthewest.com and check out my local beef resources there. That's it for me. I'm Trinity Vandenacre. Until next time, God bless.